Hey family, how's it going? It's your boy Saint CJ and welcome back to another episode on my YouTube channel. Today, I'm coming at you by myself and I'm coming back at you at the same location where I used to do my videos uh, this same way a couple years ago. So going back to the old school kind of way of doing things. But this time, we have a high quality camera. Can we just first of all give glory to God for that? Because yo... Last time I was looking like I had CCTV and things. So, yo, we ain't doing that again. <laughs> but, yo, I just want to thank God for uh, good coverage, high-quality coverage video. I mean, I look clear on this thing, man. It's mad. Anyways, if you don't know about this channel, make sure to subscribe for notifications or more content. And also, make sure to like and comment if you want to see more content on my channel just like this. So, you're probably wondering, you know, I'm expecting the Overcomer series, episode, whatever, whatever, whatever. Do you know, what's going on, CJ? Uh, this ain't the Overcomer series, there ain't no guest, it's just you by yourself. And today I decided to take a step back from the Overcomer series and share with you guys a testimony um, of something that I recently went through about six months ago. And it's been just healing, um, healing through over these six months. But now, I feel the Lord tell, um, told me to share it. I said, Lord, when? And he said, do it now. So I pray that this uh, video can be encouragement to you. And this video can help you through the hard things in your life. Can help you to know that there is healing available in Jesus Christ. And that there is the power to forgive in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus forgave all those that did him wrong and actually loved on them. And I believe that we can do the same. And this is a, a testimony of the redemptive power and the restorative power of the Lord Jesus Christ. So today I'm going to be talking about something that is too common, unfortunately, within our context of the church. And something that we see too regularly. And that is church hurt. I'll be talking to you guys today about how I almost gave up on the church and I almost gave up on even attending and being connected to a local body because of what I'd gone through. But by the grace of God, I was able to be connected to the local body I'm a part of now, Big Up Imprint Church and under leaders and, and support of friends um, at the church that are now my family and now they've really taken me in and they've helped me through this very hard transition, I guess, that I went through when I first came to Imprint Church. So, um, first and foremost, before I even start, I'm going to pray and then we're going to get right into it. Father God, I want to thank you so much for who you are. I want to thank you, Father God, for this time that I get to just share your power, your restorative power, your restorative power within this world through this testimony may people know that you can restore anything may they know that you can heal anything that lord there's nothing that you cannot fix nothing broken that you cannot mend back together and that lord you can use all things for your good for the bible says all things work together for the good of those that love you and are called according to your purpose, Father God. And I also thank you, Lord, that what the devil meant for evil, God will always mean for good. So I just pray right now, speak through this testimony, speak through this moment, and may you get all the glory and all the honor that's due to your name. Take the throne, Jesus. May my words be edifying. May my words be encouraging. And may you just take hold of everything I'm going to say and every. Um, insight I'm going to give and may it just bring forth fruit of of kindness, of gentleness, of long suffering, of patience uh, and of, of especially forgiveness and healing in Jesus name we pray Amen family so yeah, uh, just before I start the story I just want to uh, shout out my amazing hairdresser for these cornrows right here um, she's a G. I'm gonna tag her in the comment section. Uh, Abby, she did an amazing, amazing job. Do you know what I mean? And uh, hope you guys think what do you guys think about it. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Uh, but I think she did an amazing job. So big up my 
T Abby. If you want some sick hairstyles, male, female, hit her up still. So yeah, let's get into it. Uh, I'm also wearing a night truck suit. Nike, if you see this, give me some promo, partner, uh, partnered promo, partnership. Let's go. Let's go. I need to secure that bag. You get me? Now I'm playing. Anyways, this is uh, the testimony. So about six months ago, um, I joined my new community. And before I even start, actually, I just want to shed honor to, to this story. Now, when I mention this story, I am not bringing any dishonor to any leader, to any community, and to any um, body of believers when I share this testimony. This is a testimony that I went through and I'm not angry, I'm not bitter, and I'm not blaming anybody for the things that I went through. I'm not going to mention names, I'm not going to mention communities, I'm not going to mention finer details out of honour and respect for the community because I don't want people to have a negative mindset on the leader nor a negative mindset on the community in which I used to be associated to. I don't want anybody, uh, I don't want anyone to make assumptions based on this as well. I just want you guys to take it as it is and I pray that this story will just bless people. But I'm speaking out of a heart of healing. I'm speaking out of a heart that I love this leader, that I love this community, that I love the people within this community, that I will be there for these people in this community, that I continue to support this community, that I continue to give to this community and their causes and push them and 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 and, and I'm still connected with community and friends to this community. So this story is simply just to share my experience as an encouragement and healing to others that have been through the same thing, been through misunderstandings, been through um, culture clashes within a community and how to heal from these things and how to be restored and how to still love on those people. So yeah, so I wanted to share, so six months ago, uh, I, I moved from my old community to the new community I am in now and the move was God ordained God definitely told me and led me to the community that I am in now and he led me to find a new um, covering that could understand the calling and purpose that I had over my life now even though it was God's will doesn't mean that it was easy it was definitely a challenging and hard decision but when God tells you to do something you've got to do it right so i'll start at the beginning um i have a i had a very very close relationship to a leader in my life I saw him as a father figure uh when i didn't have a father figure he was there for me he spoke life into me we did life together we ate together we drove around in his car together we had some funny adventures and some big banter together and i still love this man and his family so much they are like my family they are like my peoples you know and i would still and i would ride and die for them any day they they are you know they're like people that i love so much and i can't wait to see them grow and, and develop in life and all that beautiful stuff so you know i speak this again in love in love in love in love in love and in respect so this leader we had a really good relationship and basically there came to a point where we had a misunderstanding and it's sad when those things happen it's sad that we got able to reason uh like the way we could have been able to reason uh but i thank god that now there is there is there is a grace in our relationship and there is an understanding in our relationship there wasn't at this current time so I remember, you know, having this father figure of a leader in my life and he, you know, would give me such good wisdom and advice and I remember just telling him my calling, what I felt God was calling me to, how I felt God was calling me to, to serve not just my local um, community, my local body, but to serve a greater body, to serve the global body of Christ, to serve beyond just where I was and to, to actually be a global um, leader, a global 
um, speaker and voice and evangelist for this nation and for many nations and a global worship leader and a global artist, a gospel artist, a kingdom minister for the glory of God. And I remember I was going around different places, ministering on tours and abroad and God was really moving through these events. And I just remember um, I was back in December last year, I got a privilege and the honour to actually uh, minister to 1,300 lives through a beautiful, amazing kingdom organisation called Final Call Productions. Big up Jermaine and Daniela, Danielle Wong. God bless them. They are my, my big bro and big sister. They could be my mum and dad, you know, <laughs> based on age. Like, he's got a son the same age as me. But they are just, like, big brother and sister in the Lord. And they, you know, they were doing this ministry, theatre ministry at the Catford Broadway Theatre. And I was able to, you know, be a part of this and share the gospel through theatre. It's something that I've never done, but I always have desire to use my gifts to glorify God. It was a powerful, powerful, powerful experience that I will never forget. Never, never forget. It was incredible. So I remember doing uh, this production and I wasn't um, able to, to do as much in my community at the time. Um, but I still wanted to do things. I still wanted to serve in my community. I still wanted to lead in my community, the youth and worship. Um, but basically, I had I had to be um, away for a season um, to to do this ministry. It means that basically I'd be um, at my local assembly every other week, not consistently every week, but maybe every other week for I think about six weeks, um, or I would come late. So I think I might have missed a couple um, of, of gatherings and then I was late to a few but I still wanted to be involved in the midweeks and in Bible studies and in um, youth concerts and youth things uh, but I remember speaking to, to my leader and he wasn't really on that kind of said you know what I mean I don't, if you're not going to be here then you can't really be involved in the things that are going on here and I said okay I respect that and I honour that and I remember even speaking to him about this ministry and at first he wasn't really in support of it he didn't really feel like you know he didn't know if he trusted the people I was with or didn't know if this is God's will and, and I was you know explaining this is definitely God's will and what God wants to do with me um, and use me beyond just where I was um, so I did this ministry and praise God for it um, but I did feel a lack of support, to be honest. I felt like a lack of support for this ministry. Uh, I wanted to, to share uh, and I wanted my, my community to come to the event that I was doing. But then I, with that, I was told no. And I think this is where our relationship began, began to become a bit strenuous, began to become a bit distorted whereby I would be doing my ministry and although with words my leader was saying he's, um, they support it uh, with their actions they weren't supporting it when I would say oh guys you know I've got this event I was told to keep it hush don't talk about the event don't invite people to the event outside of your local community because we don't want them we don't want our community mixing with outside community and for me I don't believe in that as a Christian I don't believe in this, you know, my community, your community, my sector, your sector kind of thing. I don't really believe in it. I don't think it's a biblical principle. Uh, and I feel like it segregates the body of Christ. So I was like, well, who's one body in Christ? I mean, it doesn't matter whether, you, you know, you you um, fellowship here, you fellowship there. We're all one body in Christ, you know. Uh, but that was the beginning of the, um, the misunderstanding between both of us. And when I started being like, no, I, I want to share this. I want people to come to my events. I want people to come to what God is doing outside of just where we are, outside the four walls. But again, I was given no. And when it came out to being involved in, in ministry and involved in things within my local context, I was then told no. I was told you can't be involved in things, that you can't be used in things, that you can't do things because your exampleship, your example to the church is not right. Um, for 
words I do not know. And I could re respect that I couldn't do as much because of the context of the fact that I wasn't as in I wasn't there as much as I would want to be. But at the same time, I still wanted to serve in some way. I still wanted to give. I still wanted to pour. But being told just to sit down and do nothing because not because of I'm, I wasn't there or not because I wasn't invested, but because my mindset conflicted the principles of what they felt was 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 the way in which to do things. I did struggle with that, you know, and I, I did struggle that there were certain opportunities um, to minister and to pour into the body that I was told I cannot do because I don't want to be setting the wrong example for the body. And that was very difficult. That was very difficult. I kind of felt like, you know, I was doing everything in the body and now because I wasn't doing exactly what I was told or what was um, what was expected of me in that regard, I was told now you can't do anything. And it felt a strip of, I guess, of, of my, my um, service. It felt like I didn't, couldn't do anything in my body and I felt a little bit alienated. I felt a bit like, it seems like what I'm doing is wrong, but I knew for a while it wasn't wrong. It was actually kingdom, but it wasn't supported in that way. And that meant that not many people came to support this ministry that I was doing in December. Not many people came to the event. And um, that was rough. And I wasn't able to promote it or to speak about it, or even speak about the testimony of what God did, even in my local assembly. So that was like kind of the first kind of breakdown, I guess, we had in our relationship. Um, and I could understand points of, of, of the leader's reasoning, but I didn't believe in the fact of not being able to share and being isolated and being told it's wrong and being told this isn't God's will and this isn't what God's telling you to do and this path will lead you astray, even though I was doing God's work. So now fast forwarding on to January, uh, yeah, January, just after the show, when I, you know, I was back involved and invested in my community, I was like, um, I wanted to be used. I wanted to to do things within my local assembly, which again, I was told no to. I was told I hadn't shown a faithfulness to the church. I wasn't shown a faithfulness to the body. I wasn't shown a faithfulness to the community um, because I had been doing ministry and now I can't just come back and expect to serve without any sort of faithfulness, not knowing that I was still coming to the Bible studies, I was still coming to, to midweek um, gatherings, I was still coming to all the things that were going on um, and I only missed a couple of, of, the, of the week, night, a week uh, weekend gatherings, the, the Sunday gatherings. So I kind of felt like, well, I'm here and I'm involved and I've even communicated when I can't be and you know even when I can't be I've communicated and I've explained and, I, and, I've, and I've reasoned so why can I not be used at all and it came down again to this this lack of faithfulness this lack of example this lack of of um of being a a a, a model to the church to the body of Christ and then, which was then um, further emphasised through being told that I left them, I, I, I left my ministry to my body to pursue something that wasn't for, from God and that I actually left them to fend for themselves, that I didn't care, that I don't care about the body, I only care about myself and that it was selfish, self-centred and that um, it was like an act of of disregard and I just basically betrayed them and I left them and I didn't care about them and I just discarded them and disregarded my body because I was doing ministry for the Lord and that really hurt when I remember it happening it was definitely hurt and I definitely felt like that wasn't true I didn't do anything to I loved my body so much doing my ministry I was like I miss you guys I can't wait to be involved 
again and do you know what I mean even I wasn't even missing for long you know it's a couple of weeks and then I came back and I was there invested and involved and helping and serving and midweeks and all these different things so I felt as though I had been been mistreated and I felt as though I had been I had been misjudged and my motives had been misjudged and I think that was the hardest thing is that when you're told your motives are harmful or the way you're you're acting is harmful that that is that is hard blow to swallow that you are selfish and you are prideful and you just look for that for yourself and you're uh, just so rebellious and you and, uh, all these things and you're not you don't know you don't know anything because you've only you're only young you've only been saved for a minute and you know your leaders feel justified because they've been saved for decades that they know everything they know you know your intentions how you feel and, uh, and they know that when you're acting like this this is a result of an issue when actually this was just ministry so then from this place I began to just let go, began to say, you know what, it's just a misunderstanding. Soon I'll be in ministry, soon I'll be using my body again. And months and months went past and there was no change. And I just was sitting in my community, sitting in the chairs, listening to, to my leaders speak. And I felt as though I'd been thrown to the side for trying to see my body actually elevated through connecting them to new uh, ministries and new works of God and actually lifting up the name of Jesus, I felt misjudged. And whenever telling my calling or sharing my calling with this leader, this leader always belittled it. He always said that the music would never work, that the ministry would never work, that it's not gonna go anywhere, that it doesn't last that has no value, that you should just give it up. Focus on things that are more important. You're pursuing your creative gifting over your, your preaching gifting that you have and it's not gonna go anywhere. People don't get saved through music. People don't get saved through through acting at a, or about Jesus and doing Christian plays. People don't get saved through your gift. People don't get saved through worship leading. Why are you leading worship at other communities when you don't even know who they are? Why are you leading worship at places that are not your own community? You can lead other places, but you can't lead in your own community because you don't care about your own community and you show a lack of faithfulness and selfishness to your community. And when these things were said, it just hit me deep because when your father figure in the Lord says these things about you, says these these words and, and, and speaks down upon your vision, and it's difficult. It's like a father saying, I don't think you're talented. You don't, can't do nothing. You don't care about nobody. You, you're, you're, you're so self-centered. You feel as that, like, wow, like, what have I done? Like, why am I, am I being treated in this way? What have I done to deserve this kind of treatment? And I realized that it wasn't my fault, but I felt that way for many, many months. I felt like it was my fault. I felt like I was the issue, I was the problem. And as I say this, I'm not saying that my leader was the problem. I'm saying that our, our misunderstanding was the problem. The fact, the lack of being able to see each other's perspectives, the lack of us being able to to be molded and humble, and humility is such an important factor to have. And I could have been more humble, my leader could have been more humble too. So you know, fast forward now, and we're just dealing with this on a weekly basis, and I'm dealing with these feelings of feeling hurt, feeling mistreated, words spoken that are just not not edifying at all and every time i'm saying i'm you know i'm gonna go minister here i'm gonna go minister there i'm being told it's wrong don't do it or you're still gonna remain out of ministry if you do that i remember one time approaching my leader and saying i'm going to minister at this 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 um conference what do you think and he says you know what i think and i said okay what is going to happen if i don't do it 
you don't do it and you stop doing what you're doing, then you can be used here again. So what if I do do it? You won't be used here. And it just felt like I was being used everywhere else instead of the place I wanted to be used. Just for allowing my ministry to go beyond my local setting, beyond just where I was comfortable. I wanted to bless the body of Christ, not just my community. I wanted to bless the world, not just the fools of the church. So I felt hurt and I felt like, wow, you know, people would be saying, oh, you know, you don't do anything in our community. Why is that? You know, you used to do everything. I'm not going to say because I'm not allowed, because I've not been, I've been told not to, or I've been told, you know, it's not your place. Because I want to honour. I want to honour, I want to honour. And even as I say this, I'm still mindful of honouring. The Bible even talks about how David honoured Saul, even when Saul was trying to kill David. So now, going to the rockier, harder bits of my experiences, and I pray that this one, these moments, will bring so much healing to your life. Because this is how God can make you get through anything. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And this is what it means to be an overcomer. I remember three incidents happened after these moments that really, I guess, made me snap. And this was this. And that was this, sorry. The first incident was we were all praying one day as a community. And I remember um, we were just laying hands and praying for people. And I used to be part of the, the prayer um, community and the prayer team for this community. And we were praying, and I went stretch, stretch forth, you know, out my hands to pray for people. Um, and there was a woman uh, being prayed for, a good friend of mine, and we were praying for her for just uh, freedom and deliverance. And I remember, you know, going out, um, going stretch my heart to pray for her, and I wasn't going to touch her out of just, you know, um, honor to this woman because she, at the time, she wasn't as close to me. I didn't want you know to do that and you know it just being a bit um dishonoring you know i want to just you know put my hand down and just be like you know i'm here i'm praying for you but i'm still honoring of your space and um yeah i remember we were praying and what ended up happening was because i was close to her and i was praying for her and i was near to her uh, i think my leader miscommunicated misread the whole situation and thought i had my hand on her now, even if I did have my hand on her, this action that he, that was done would not be justified. Um, so what ended up happening was because he felt that I was praying and laying hands on people, which we were, everybody was doing, but because I was doing it, I got singled out. Uh, I got dragged to the side in front of my whole community, on the arm, on his wrist, tightly pulled away and was told I could never lay hands on somebody in this community ever again. And that just hit like a, like a dagger in my heart. I said, like, what, like, why? Like, what did I do wrong? I didn't understand what I did wrong. And I even was like, um, I didn't even, you know, lay hands on her. He said, no, the principle is you are not meant to do anything here. You know, I don't know who you think you are, but you need to know your place. You are not to lay hands on anybody or pray for anybody in this community at all without coming to me, without saying something to me. And this was hard because I was an established member in this community. I was even there before this leader had come into the community for years before this leader had come over me. and. Uh, I felt as though, you know, I've been here and I've been part of this community and I've been, le and I've been, um, you know, a part of this community and, and praying for people for years. And because, again, I'm not doing what you want me to do or how you see things to be fit, but I am humbling myself and saying, okay, that now I'm not able to even pray for people. 
say it was more than just ministry it was my general my general place felt like I was not meant to be there I didn't feel like I was wanted I didn't feel like I was appreciated I didn't feel like I was loved and there was ways in which that could have been done better am I saying that I might have not been in the wrong in that situation maybe you know in hindsight maybe I should have of of put myself in that position knowing what happened before but I didn't think there was anything wrong with it and I thought that I was just praying for people and showing love and just doing what Christ wants me to do and I never was in saw in a community that you can't pray for people no matter what anybody pray for everybody do you know so when that happened all of my community saw it and I think the hardest thing that I felt and something that I never addressed um, with any of them because didn't think it was necessary that nobody said anything about it. It wasn't what even the words, it was the word and the action. The action of grabbing my wrist, of pulling me aside forcefully and speaking down at me like I don't know anything, like I'm a nobody, telling me, you know, you not, you don't know anything, you're barely alive, you know, what do you know? I've been, I've been, uh, I've been a leader longer than you've been alive. It just made me feel belittled, like I don't know anything. And again, there was these words of prideful, rebellious spirit, disobedient. And I was just hurt, really deeply hurt. And I think that was the point that was really wounding me the most. And I said, this ain't right. This isn't right. Maybe I could be in the wrong in some way, but this isn't right. And at first, you know, I spoke to my community about it and they said maybe misunderstood, maybe didn't mean to, maybe it was an accident that he pulled you away, maybe the words he said were out of context. I spoke to him, my leader about it, and I said, you know, did you mean to pull me away? Was there a reason? And again, I got that same answer, you need to know your place. Your place is not to do that, you need to know your place. And your, your place is to sit down and just do what you're told. And that was rough. That was that was rough. And I just felt hurt. And I think it's something that I had trauma about for a while. Maybe a couple months after I left the community, I had trauma from just being the physical violation and the verbal violation and the emotional detachment and the spiritual questioning and my motives being questioned it just felt like my whole identity as a believer was being questioned like I wasn't even a believer anymore because I was acting in ways that my leader didn't see fit so now going to the last two factors that happened um, the second factor that happened was there was some backbiting that happened. Uh, words were said to my community uh, by my leader that I shouldn't be trusted, that I wasn't a good example, that people should keep their children away from me, and that I will sow seeds of discord within the community. That thing hurt a lot too. You know, being told that you sowed sowed seeds of discord in a place where you've loved and served for so many years. You know, I served my community for four and a half years. And uh, it just felt like everything I'd done meant nothing. It felt like every, my identity was completely being misjustified. And the way I was being presented was completely wrong. I'd invested years and time and prayers and service to a community to then have a leader that doesn't want me there anymore and a community that won't stand up for me when things that are going wrong are going wrong. And it was hard because I didn't want to share these deeper things I was going through because I didn't want to dishonor my leader. But when I did share them, again, the responses were, a misunderstanding, you're, you're miscommunicating, give it patience, give it time. It wasn't anything of addressing it, anything of saying maybe you should speak to your leader about these things and try and deal with them the proper the way 
you know, and properly sit down with him. I remember speaking to other leaders in this community, trying to get their input, and there was no action done to the things and the way that I had felt. Again, told me you can't do this and you can't do that and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that and don't promote your music here, don't promote your ministry here, don't promote your stuff here, it's not wanted. I don't want the community coming to your shows. I don't really want the community coming to your ministry. I don't want the community supporting what you're doing. We don't want it here. And we, you can do it out there, but it's not anything to do with us. Do your own thing. And it just felt like, yeah, it just felt strenuous. It felt like I was trying to find the love from a father that I'd basically given up on father that didn't really want anything to do with me anymore, saw me as a burden, and saw me as someone that was always trying to, I want to serve, I want to help, let me do something, was always told no, so I decided and I prayed, and I said, God, I will remain here if it's your will, I will spy it through, I'll deal with it, I'll take it on the chin, and I will just serve. Because this is the community you want for me. It's the community you want for me. But if it's not your will for me to be anymore. If maybe this is the time for me to move. To fulfill my calling. Let me know. Speak to me. And I fasted for a month. And prayed about this. And I continued to stay in my community. After all the violations. After violation. After violation. After violation. I continued to remain. And then. I had a prophetic word. From a mentor of mine. That told me. God is moving you on and he didn't know it was to do with community he thought it was to do with work but so God is moving you on from where you are right now and he's taking you to a new place and that's now where I'm at imprint church so the place where I was at the community I was a part of and the people and the body God was moving me to a new body to a new community that understood my calling understood my vision with a leadership and a leader and a covering that supported my calling that supported what I was good to call to do and understood why I was doing it and there was reasoning that happened there I remember having that conversation with my community saying I feel like I'm going to move I'm going to leave and many of my community weren't in support of it so you don't have to you know there's ways you can look around this you can deal with this but I know in my spirit it was time to go. And I remember telling my leader, you know, I feel like it's time for me to go. And to that response, words were spoken. This isn't from God. This isn't from God. This is demonic. You know, God didn't tell me, he didn't tell you. This is selfish. You know, this is not the right decision to make. This is rebellious. This is an act of rebellion. This is an act of witchcraft. And I just felt so deeply hurt that I was called, redeemed as a rebel, redeemed as someone that didn't listen to the voice of God, that didn't care, that was trying to just do what I wanted to do and couldn't hear from God for myself. And this is why I had to learn to not live to please people. And for so long, I think I was trying to please a father figure, trying to please this, this man that didn't have my calling even regarded as something that he wanted to support or wanted to get behind. It was very much what he saw for me rather than what God saw for me. And I want to encourage you guys, don't live to please people don't live to fit people's mold of what they want you to be but be who God has called you to be and live to please him alone it's so important to have counsel and wisdom and leadership and mentors but your leaders are not your they're not your God your your prophets your pastors your teachers are not your gods only Jesus is your God and let Jesus be the voice that you listen to above any other name or any other authority that may say something that is contrary to what God has said to you. Contrary, sorry, to what God has said to you. So then I was told just simply, all right then, goodbye. Completely disregarded, no, thank you, no. Um, 
we appreciate your service. And I didn't need that, I didn't want that. But it felt the complete disregard of who I was to the community. I couldn't even say goodbye. There was no leaving. There was no like leaving fellowship. There was no leaving, uh, saying goodbyes. No sort of acknowledgement of me and who I was to the community. It was just, all right, bye, see you later. And with that, I was told to leave every group chat and stop speaking to people and even when it came to um, communicating with people there were I was told there would be restrictions I can't talk to uh, you know my youth community unless I spoke to my leader first and I was told not to speak of this to anybody uh, because my side of the story was invalid and it was simply that I decided to do my own thing I didn't go through her, I didn't go through misunderstanding. It was simply, you made this decision and I don't support it. And I was told to tell people that my leader didn't support it. I was told to tell people that my leader didn't think it was from God. And to have that weight of knowing that my leader didn't think it's from God, but I'm saying it is from God. I don't know how my community felt. And to this day, many people weren't sure, but over time, they were able to reason and a lot of, you know, my community come across, across this, this might be the first time we've ever heard this story. And I just want to encourage you again that this is my story. I don't want you to take this and, and I pray your heart be in the right place to receive what I'm saying. In Jesus' name. It's all a testimony, it's all the past and there is an overcoming spirit from this. So to conclude the final part of this testimony, of all, when I almost gave up on the church, going through church hurt with a leader that was over me in my old church. Um, I remember speaking to my leader and I wanted to ask if it was a possibility for me to maybe visit in the future, maybe uh, see how the youth are doing, see how everybody's doing. Um, because I this is about maybe a month after I'd left and for a month, this leader completely aired my calls, completely uh, ignored me for basically a month or two. And I remember asking, and my answer that I was given was no, you are not allowed to visit this community again. As long as I'm here, the leader, you're not allowed to visit here again. None of our events, none of our services and of our community events you're not allowed to visit at all if people want to see you outside the context of the community that's up to them but i do not support you coming to any of our gatherings and uh, to this day i think that is still a reality um something that i still pray will change but i've learned to accept it and I've learned to understand um, where my leader was coming from, you know, and I think that God allowed it and used it to be that I wouldn't look back, but I would look forward to what God had for me, God has for me in the future. Um, but yeah, to this day, I'm not able to attend my whole community, I'm not able to visit uh, after being in years of, of leading and, and preaching and worship leading and sharing testimonies and giving concerts and ministry in that community to not even be able to visit something that really rocked me to my core. I remember crying for a week, just feeling like, why Lord, what have I done? The one place that's meant to bring healing has hurt me. I think that's when I experienced church hurt and what it meant to be hurt by the church. But I had to learn that it wasn't the church that hurt me, but one individual that I had a misunderstanding with. And I had to learn that Jesus was even betrayed by his disciple. Jesus was betrayed by his disciples. But yet he said, forgive them, Father, they don't know what they're doing. He was betrayed by the people that he came to die for. And that broke me to say, I can't hold bitterness towards this leader. 
I've got to be like David and pray and love him and love on him and, and bless him and bless his family. And this is why I learned, love your enemies, bless those that curse you, do good to those that do wrong to you, that may your Father in heaven be glorified. That's what it's all about. You know, when someone tears off your coat, give it to them. Give them, when they hurt you, when they despise you, when they speak wrong of you, do only but speak life and blessing and, 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 and continue to, to, to bless them and, and uplift them and, and speak life over them. And that's why I will speak over my leader's life and say he's a blessing. He, he, he is a man of wisdom. He is a man of, of, of honesty and he was um, a good man, a good man with a good heart, a good father, a good husband, a good leader, a good son, a good disciple and a good and a child of God. And I will never speak wrong of him or his family. And I bless him. And I remember being so broken to be shunned, you know, just like the, the poster shows on, on this, this video on Instagram, no entry, being shunned, it rocked me to my core, I never thought that I would have experienced that, but now God has given me something that I can use to help others and bring healing, and you know, I want to share the goodness of how this testimony comes around, because God taught me how to forgive and be more loving, be more merciful, be more graceful, that even leaders can make mistakes. And even as I become a leader, I'm going to make mistakes, God. I'm going to fall. I'm going to do things wrong. But I pray for the grace to learn from what I've done wrong. And by the grace of God, you know, I shared a word of encouragement over this man's life. I mentioned him in my book as an honorary mention of a leader that blessed me. And um, I pray for him and his family. I bless him and his family. I am still very close to his children and to his wife, and I blessed them, and I even sent a love offering by the grace of God, not for my glory, not to, to show any glory to myself, but I let send a love offering to bless them, and that's only because of the love of God that God put inside of my heart, it's not through me guys, I could not forgive such a hot transgression, I would not be able to forgive being abused physically, and spiritually, and emotionally, by someone I call a father figure, and then being kicked out, and, 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 and shun, I wouldn't be able to deal with those things if I did not have the grace of God over my life, if I did not see that Jesus went through beating and whipping and nails and 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 whip and, and uh, a spear in his side and a crown of thorns all for our sins. How can we not forgive the sins of others and the trespasses of others that do us wrong? So and this is coming full circle and I thank God that through all this, he's been able to do such a work in my heart and build my character. I had to go through this fire to come out the other side unscorched, to come out a new person, to come out a better person. So that's my testimony of going through church hurt. It's not easy, it's hard, it pains a lot. And to this day, there are still things that have not maybe been completely rest, re restored, but I pray for those things in Jesus' name. And even recently, you know, me and my leader, we spoke um, just briefly. I just said, happy birthday. And I said, happy anniversary. And he responded and was like, thank you. And that was a lot, you know. And I pray one day we'll be able to have a conversation, see how, we, how each other are doing bless each other. Uh, I pray that as he sees me in the journeys of my life, as I go through marriage and children, that he can, can witness those things and he can uh, be a, a part of those things. Do you know what I mean? There's never enough grace for everybody. This good grace never runs out. So I want to encourage you, if you've been through church hurt, you've been hurt by a leader or a father figure, they've done you wrong, they've mistreated you, they've spoken words wrong against you, they've exiled you, if the church has ever shunned you or exiled you or kicked you out or told you you're not good enough or told you you're nobody, if, they, if they've done these things, to know that you are loved by Jesus, 
that you are loved by the King of Kings and his validation and his word and what he says about you is the only thing that matters. You are who he says. You are who the great I am says that you are. So I want to encourage you that there's nothing with Jesus that you can't let go of. And I pray in this moment um, just that the Lord will just deliver you and free you of all bitterness and pain and malice and trauma that you've gone through and that he will bring you peace, forgiveness and restoration in Jesus' name. I want to just pray. Father, I thank you for this, my testimony. I thank you that this testimony can help heal so many lives. I thank you that, Lord, even though it was a vulnerable testimony to share, I pray that you will get the glory. I pray that you will get the honor. I pray that people will come closer to you. People that were, that, that left the church, that are done with the church, will come back to the Father's heart and the Father's house. And I just pray, Father God, against any demonic strategy that will come to use this video to bring discord or bring or bring um, anger or bring up rival or bring any sort of things that are not of you, anything toxic, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. And I speak that every heart that listens to this will take it with the right heart, that there will be no accusations, there will be no things spoken against um, anybody in, in this in this um video but lord i just pray you will get the glory and you will get the honor and you will get the the admiration for the healing done in my heart and the healing done in the hearts that will listen to this and i pray that this testimony will show the world show the church and show the devil that there is nothing that god cannot fix nothing that god cannot heal nothing that God cannot bring you through. We are not what we go through, but we are. We are not who we, what we go through, but we are who he says we are. We are not what we've been through, but we are who he says we shall be. That's what I want to say to you, family. That's what I want to say to you. And I just pray that this has blessed you. Um, yeah, that's my testimony. Um, God bless you. Again, if you don't know about this channel, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to stay updated with everything that we're doing in this ministry. And if this, is, if this story and testimony is you close, you've gone through it, or you need someone that knows someone that needs this, please share it. And also, if you need to talk to me about this or you want advice or comfort or support, please DM me at SaintCJ underscore. Um, and I would love to, to talk you through this. And if you don't have Instagram, please email me at J-O-N-J-A-Y-O-W-E-N-0-0 at gmail.com. That's J-A-Y-O-W-E-N-0-0 at gmail dot com and we can talk about this and pray through this and i can give you advice about how to get replugged into a local body even when you feel like your local body has hurt you and you feel in a bit of a limbo i know what it is to be in that limbo stage but you're able to find the right community that's for you and this is my story about how i almost gave up on the church gave up on trusting people and gave up on serving but through this experience, I learned to just run into the arms of another community that loved me so much. And I'm grateful for the community that I'm in today uh, in Print Church and the fact that they've been able to take me in and help me. And I've had a leader covering the pastor, pastors, uh, friends and brethren in the church that have actually shown me um, the greatest deal of love and shown me um, and comforted me, shown me grace and comforted me in a time where I was very closed off, didn't want to try again, didn't want to open myself up to leaders again, didn't want to have those father figures again on those community because I felt like they would hurt me again. But they just embraced me with open arms and said, we will not let this happen here. And my pastor said to me, I will not let what you have happened to you happen here. That's my promise to you. For you are not what you've been for me, CJ. Yeah. 
So yeah, please reach out. God bless you and have a great day.